What's going on YouTube? This is Drader Plug coming at you guys with some more technical heat. Definitely hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell so you guys can stay notified every single time I drop new footage. On top of that, I just want to piggyback up on my last video that I ended up making related to the resumes. I gave you guys all of the tips, all the behind the scenes stuff that you need to do and make sure that it's perfect for your technical type of resume. But now I'm going to go over a legit one line by line. This is actually my friend. His name is Vaughn Zell. I remember I seen it a few years back and I thought it was so smooth and easy easy to read easy to decipher i was like man i'll definitely like to use this resume for this particular video one day so now we're going to do it i'm actually going to go over it line by line and really break down how your resume should look what you should have if you really want to get into one of these legit companies or really any company you can pretty much go off of this format and pretty much just mix it up and make it your own flavor but just a little background about Von Zell, man, we go way back. He really was teaching me kind of like how to be like a legit engineer as a young intel, showing me the ropes, showing me all the ins and outs of certain type of things to look out for and how to actually improve quicker. So, I mean, it was basically like a big brother to me back when I was a freshman, kind of just showing me the ropes. And he was the president of Nesby out at LSU. And on top of that, um, he was also electrical, also into like hardware, just like me. So during this time, he was going into being a graduating senior and I was just finishing up my freshman year. Let's get into the video, man. Uh, let's get into some more of this technical heat. All right, so jumping into the full resume example that I was talking about, just give you guys a full visual demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually link the education and skills part together and then the leadership experience, I'm gonna do that whole section independently. And then lastly, I'm gonna do the professional membership section by itself. So it'll be grouped like this, these two, this one, and then this one, and I'm gonna just break it down. So like, let's get into it. Let's actually break down this resume real quick from Vonzel Rashad Williams. All right, man, so jumping into it, right? So jumping into it, we have Vonzel Rashad Williams. You got your name. Can you put just your first and last name? That is also fine. It don't really much matter too much, just depending on your own preference. From there, in these three boxes, as you guys can see, I have them blank because before it was the address where you live, and then it was your phone number, and then lastly, it was your email address so the recruiter could contact you and tell you you pretty much got the job. So make sure you fill in these particular blanks. The next thing, jump into our education. You're gonna want to let the recruiter know what type of degree that you have or what type of degree are you working towards after that you want to mention when you're going to graduate because that's extremely important because that let the recruiter know is this person looking for an internship or is this person looking for a full time it really just clears a lot of air when it comes down to trying to place you in a specific position then next you have your university then your gpa so Something I just want to throw out there for the GPA part, I mean, especially, especially if you're in tech, once you reach above a 3.0, like most tech companies, they really don't care too much about your GPA. It's more so what type of projects have you done? What have you created? What exactly have you made? And what, can you elaborate on what you did when you actually created or made anything like most tech companies? They really don't care that much about your GPA It's typically just like. A requirement i mean it's kind of expected for an engineer to have over 3.0 anyways just saying but i mean like i said when i was in silicon valley out in cali i went to a career fair and i had my gpa on my resume i had a pretty good gpa and it was recruiters who were like what's the point of you even putting your gpa on your resume because in texas like your gpa is it holds a lot of weight especially in the oil and gas industry in texas is a lot of lot of oil and gas jobs but when it comes down to actual tech type of jobs like Silicon Valley, you know, every single tech company is out there or Austin or any type of really like tech type of company in general. Nine times out of 10, the 3.0 is really just a standard. They really don't care about that. A lot of them even hire people with GPAs lower than 3.0. But just to let you guys know, as a rule of thumb, just make sure that you have projects. The more projects you have, the more they will not care or look extremely hard at your gpa so then going into the next thing you have your skills right so automatically you could just point out instantly you see c plus plus you see verilog you see microsoft office and other ones you could easily just point out or you can even think to yourself right now what's some skills that can kind of 
be in the same exact realm that you have touched on took a class on you know have a have a good fundamental understanding of exactly which one of these skills you can add to the list so you can literally just drag and drop and basically add to this list and take certain things out just add certain type of skills that you know that you developed during you your undergrad during your time when you were even like probably a graduate student if you used any of these softwares and you're more familiar with it than the average joe or the average person going into any type of school and in general are definitely at it and if you're gonna go into a particular company where you know that they use this type of program or this type of software or even this type of hardware i'll also kind of throw this in the mix too because it kind of separates you from the pack all right so jumping into it jumping into our leadership experience so this is the main section what's gonna make a recruiter say man i want to hire this person or they don't want to hire this person because this is going to tell them pretty much everything that they really need to know what type of projects what exactly have you worked on this is going to let them know instantly whether or not they're going to want to hire you so Jumping into it, you have control, engineer, intern, right? So that's just letting the recruiter know, you know, your job position, basically. And then all the way out beside it, you have the actual company name. So, you know, OK, this person worked here. This was the job where he was at. Well, the position, of course. And then right below that was the location. OK, he was at this particular state. So another thing about when it comes down to your location, it looks really, really good when a recruiter looks at your resume and they see that you actually worked in different states because then it's like, man, like this person don't mind traveling at all. He don't mind going to a, a different state to go to work. So it kind of opened up doors definitely versus actually looking at your resume and seeing that you have the same city and you haven't really went anywhere else because it kind of give the recruiter an impression that you don't want to leave sometime if you don't note it out like it's a lot of recruiters they'll actually ask at the career fair are you open to leave the state and if you say yes that pretty much open up doors for you if you say no obviously it's kind of like man it's like some companies they show up to different type of universities and they don't even have like their head location or their main locations at all in the same state in some cases like some some recruiters they show up and they never even been to that state before the only reason they're there is just so they could actually talk to you at your university so that's another thing when it comes down to the state and then also just throw in just how long it took you for your internships or your time at the job or whatever you've done and then from there you're going to just make some bullet points like i had mentioned before in my other video just kind of state what you did you don't have to go into details don't make it a paragraph don't go on and on talking about one particular project. Just kind of give them like this really kind of just drop like some drop some sprinkles, man. That will kind of really make them want to go back and say, yo, what's this line about or what's that line about? Like I see some key words where you kind of mention about this, this and that. It relates to some stuff that we already work on. That's what you want to do. Throw in key words in this section and kind of just knock out some lines and just touch on different stuff that the company that you're trying to go and talk to already or something that you even want to do in the field make sure you have those type of keywords in these lines so something else you just want to make sure that you do when you go in and you kind of make your resume and list out the different things make sure when you state it you want to kind of show ownership of exactly what you did the worst thing that you could do is kind of say that you know what i worked on this with this particular person i did this with that particular person i didn't really do anything on my own it kind of let the recruiter think that man like this person he worked on projects but it's like it's do he have the ability to work or even create on his own so you kind of just want to let the recruiter know like i can actually make this or even do this or even code this on my own if it comes down to it okay so some of you guys may be wondering like man you know i don't even have an internship yet but i mean i have projects i have personal projects that i typically worked on at my house or even worked on at school or maybe even worked on in high school so this is pretty much a good example of pretty much how to showcase that this is something that i had on my particular resume this is how i formatted it and this was basically independent projects that i did on my own and then right here is literally a section of projects and things that I actually did in high school. And this section actually helped me get a job with General Electric when I was a sophomore, sophomore freshman. But just to let you guys know, like this is a pretty good example. So like how I just showed how he had three different internships. If you have nothing but just 
high school related projects or even you know school type projects you can actually have three sections of these and just explain the whole entire thing you know everything that you did everything related to electrical computer science or even computer engineering it just explain everything that you did and you can throw in coding you can throw in soldering and creating circuit boards you can throw in making all types of different type of electronic projects just explain all of that stuff because that's what recruiters really want to hear specifically your projects i can't touch on it enough all right, so jumping into the last part of your resume, which is basically your professional and memberships. In some cases, you may see people have on their resume that this is named awards and achievements, but basically this is where you pretty much highlight different type of achievements or different type of positions that you specifically got. And it's clearly not easy for everybody to pretty much have it. And you kind of just highlight like, yo, look, this is exactly what I ended up completing or was awarded or this position that I got leveled up to being in after working hard. That's pretty much what this whole particular section is about. Like definitely throwing your fraternity, definitely throwing the fact if you were like in a national society of black engineers and you was the president, like that's something you would definitely just want to highlight and kind of like list out. I mean, also other things that you can also do too, you know, mention if you were in hackathons, if you were in like any type of electronic, like project competition, or if you were in robotics, like definitely throw that out there, especially if you know you place like top three inside of that particular event like that makes a huge difference like that's something that's gonna have a recruiter really just like look at and be like man like this person did x y and z in this particular competition and you got that achievement on your resume to kind of back it up and you could basically tell the whole story and kind of make the the whole interview process or even talking to a recruiter way more relaxed because now you could kind of elaborate on a smooth story where you actually achieved something or was awarded something so definitely try to throw stuff like that in the mix in this particular section so anything that you you will think of or you will typically highlight even going back to high school that you pretty much was involved with or let's say that you're a freshman or sophomore like you really don't have too much but really high school type of information that you could throw out. So if you were to actually mention that, you know, I actually took this electronic class and I was like the best in my class at X, Y, and Z. That's already like a good highlight jumping into being only a freshman. You don't really have a whole lot to gauge off of. And that will kind of give you the leg up when it comes down to getting that, that first internship as a freshman or as a sophomore. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe it really do help my channel when it comes down to the youtube algorithm if you guys have any questions regarding anything just hit me up on instagram hit me up on the gram at dre the plug one two three and then also go check out my other youtube channel this is actually my second channel my first one was called andre classic cuts i basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out.